You know, when it comes to praise and thanksgiving, I don't know about you, but maybe, uh, maybe you've been given a gift. Maybe it was at a birthday. Maybe it was at Christmas. And some people are really good at receiving gifts, or so we think. In other words, when somebody gets a gift, um, they're like, <laughs> you know, or they go, oh my God. <laughs> but if you're like me sometimes, you're given a gift, and here's what you say. Wow, thank you. Uh, I don't know what to say. And it doesn't look like somebody else receiving a gift. I, I know that um, I, I can relate sometimes even with this conversation I had with Pastor Austin about like, uh, I, because I know I'm not emotional, doesn't mean I'm not thankful. And so I, I just want to encourage you. I think this is a lot, a lot of times for the men in the room. Um, your praise and your thanksgiving, it doesn't have to be emotional. It just needs to be honest and heartfelt. And the Bible says that in that place where you and I just simply express praise and thanksgiving to God, He inhabits. He shows up in just in mighty ways. I'm thankful for a mighty God. Not just not just a, a, a whimsical God. One that, you know, that where you can just be real, authentic in you and just express your heart in a sense, um, even if it sounds dry. Have you ever been there where it just sounds dry? And so because it sounds dry and it doesn't look like somebody else's thank you or somebody else's praise or somebody else's whatever it might be, your expectation or even in a sense your view of your response, in a sense you're like, I, maybe I'm not doing this good enough. But can I tell you, when you express your heart in honesty to the Lord, He is pleased. And so when we come together and we worship and, and there are songs, the song of your heart, uh, a new song uh, that might just sound just like, thank you, Lord. You've been good to me. Thank you, Lord. He's there. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, hey, it's good to be in church this morning because we probably won't be here tonight if we had service. <laughs> um, I'm ready to have church and just have regular things again. I, I, I was thankful for snow, but I'm really not that thankful for cold right now. Um, as much as being from Minnesota, like ice fishing, they don't have the stuff here. So it's like, if it's going to be cold, you can't do anything here, you know. Up there, at least you could like ice fish or snowmobile. Here you just get dirty cars and the, the you know, the stuff's closed because, the you know, you can't even wash your car. I mean, anyway. Um, we are... We are acclimated to this weather. So people say, like, you should be used to this. And I'm like, we've lived here longer yes, than yes. we've lived in Minnesota. Like so we are truly years. acclimated to Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. So we are Southerners. We've actually, uh, this year will be half the half of our life in the South. So, um, uh, and this is where we got, to, yeah. So praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we're excited Even to be here. Even though our accents don't reflect it. I'm, I'm still working on that. Although, we do go up to Minnesota and they say, you sound like, I know I don't sound like them up there <laughs> as bad, so it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working All right, its well, way out. Well, um, we're going to kick this uh, this morning off with a couple announcements, sorry, is that what you're going to yes. start with? Yeah. And then we're going to move into uh, an offering portion of the service, and this morning we're going to recap 2023. And just look back for uh, a little bit, a portion of the service, and then we're going to go into, uh, in a sense, the start of a, a series I was going to start last week, and we didn't really get it started. We just kind of talked about some things uh, in, from my heart, and uh, this morning we're, we're going to start, uh, and I'm going to title this morning's message, There's No Plan B. And I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this out there. Uh, I, I've thought, I wrestled with uh, how to start today because I knew it was short and all of these kind of things. And so I ended up pulling all these different places um, of, of what I was going to be teaching over the next couple of weeks to try to get this one simple message that what you and I were created for, uh, there's, there's one thing. We're one body. We're going to look at this here just in a moment before we look at and recap 2023. Did you know there's one body, there's one faith, there's one, there's one, there's one head and there's one body and there's one purpose. There's no plan B for you. 
there's no plan B for you. And, um, and we're going to look at just what does it look like, what does your and my life look like um, for the glory of God. And so often it, we can be busy about our own things. Um, but part of leadership and part of um, is being very clear and calling to account. I'm thankful that we have the greatest leader. You know, in, in this day and age, there's a lot of books on leadership. There's a lot of people that talk about leadership. But all of it originates from the greatest leader, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And one of the things that he does, he sets very clearly, he sets life and blessing. And that he sets it so clear. He doesn't say, um, well, there's, this is the, the best one, but there's all these other ways also you could get there. No, it, it's, it's clear. It's either this or this. And um, I think it's important for us to take and, and look at that, that account as we look at there is one purpose. And what you're going to see as we recap 2023 in, in the video and some, some stats and some things like that, what I hope you get out, out of this is um, more than anything else is where one body functions when we're in doing things together, there's a great impact for the kingdom of God. Yes. Where, where, where parts, uh, every part of the body finds its function. If you'll go ahead and throw up Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 6, I want to go ahead and read that, and then Ephesians 4, 16, and this will be the start of our, our sharing. I don't know, were we supposed to do announcements? Yeah? Okay. Let's keep going here. I'm not good at all the, the, these, those kind of things. We'll move to the end of the announcements today. We'll do announcements at the end. So we're going to just start here and go into our uh, recap and then, um, and, and, then and, and teach, and then we'll do announcements at the end. Um, it says this, as a prisoner of the Lord, I want to urge you. I want to urge you to walk worthy or live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Did you know every person in here, you've been called? I, I remember as a young person, uh, I would always want to hear this statement that the call of God, God's call is on your life. You know, because that just meant I was important. You know, like I was valued, I was loved. Like God looked down and saw me and he's like, call of God's on your life. Can I tell you, with all confidence and with all, like straight from the Lord, the call of God is on your life, Zolly. The call of God is on your life. The call of God is on your life. Wow, that, this is, that's, a, that's a heavy thing. It's not just, just, every person here, the Lord is saying, Chris, I have a call on you. Going to the next verse, it says this. He says, um, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Uh, he's talking about, again, walking in unity as the body, the call of God on your life. It, 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 your, your call is part of a bigger call. So many times we think that it's, just, it's about my call. No, it's about his plan. It's not about my call. It's about his plan. And what you'll see here is there's one body. He says, be completely humble, be patient, bearing with one another in love, because my call is connected to you. Let's keep on going here. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Verse 4. There is one body. How many bodies? One. There's how many spirit? One. You were all, just as you were also called to one hope. What's hope? Hope is the picture, really. There's one picture that God has, a, in a sense, a, a full. Now, in a picture, there's a lots of, like if you saw maybe a, a, a landscape picture, there'd be a sun and a trees and a lake and a waterfall and birds and flowers, and, but it's one picture. And, and so there's, there's this makeup, but it's one. And so there's, you're so different, we're so different, but yet there's one purpose, one function, one call, one hope to which we're called. Next one, verse 5. And he says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. This is, this is really important. There's one. There's, there, there's one. And sometimes we get this uh, in one God and Father of us all, who, uh, who over all and through all and in all. Like, in other words, God is working it all together for one thing. So beyond church is, not the, is part of one body. And that body is bigger than just beyond church. It's bigger than just First Baptist or uh, United Methodist or Pentecostal, Holy, like whatever there is. It's, it's one. It's one. And that unity and, and the function and what it is, is when each part, verse 16, if you throw it up there, when each part works together, the body is built up. 
We're going to look at here in a little bit today, we're going to look at Ephesians 1, 2, 3. We're talking about this year, uh, one of the words that we're, we're going to look at is getting our house in order. Having our house in order. How many of you know 1, 2, 3? I've just been thinking about that, not just the Michael Jackson song, um, you know, but just thinking and seeing. I can't tell you how many times I just noticed the clock at 1, 2, 3, 4, or like where it's 1, 23, or just like thing, where their things are in sequence, you know, and it just, it, it, so now I've, I've just been, I've been looking at things just as 1, 2, 3, where Emmanuel, God with us, just remember that as you find that that's in the beginning, like 1, 2, 3, that's, a, that's the reference, Right. Well, here in Ephesians 1.23, it says that it is God who fills all in all. And he talks about how, uh, how, how the body, where there's the head and we're the body, and how God, God is the one who's actually uh, working on the earth through his body. God is through one body. So this body, beyond church, part of this, this is, is part of one body, or, or, or part of what God is doing here on the earth, a part of one plan, which is to draw men to him so that his body would grow and be built up. Ephesians 4.16, we'll put it back up there, and I want, I want to read this real quick. Uh, Ephesians 4.16, For from him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. There is a work a function, a call on your life, on my life. And you know, one of the things as, as, as pastor and for the last uh, 12, 13 years uh, now, um, maybe it's been even, this year will be longer than that, maybe 14 years. Anyway, uh, what I found is I'm so thankful for the parts and that I'm just a part, that I get to be a part. Just recently, um, we've had, we've had a, a number of different people in the hospital um, and you know what was so cool to me is that the parts of the body were loving the body. Everything didn't wait on an office or Pastor Nate to be the only one that could call. There, or if there was somebody going through a heartache or uh, 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 there was recently one of our, our church members had a fire at their house just, just with all this cold going on. Did you know it wasn't just, oh, i got to hurry up and run there. You know what happened? The body functioned, loved, connected, looked. Don't ever get discouraged by, by all the different parts or what somebody else is doing. Or if you are doing something and some other part is not doing that, don't be discouraged, annoyed, or discontented. Know and trust that the Lord has set pieces in the body and each one is to function. Yes. And I want to call even, you know, what we're going to look at is the functioning of the body. But this morning, I even want to call us to the level of function. Because sometimes, sometimes we don't function. Sometimes we're working on our own things. Right? I mean, this is a very possible thing. I, we get so care, filled with the cares of this world and, and the lust of the flesh and the things that we desire that, the, that there is no plan B for your life. And we're working on plan B, C, D, E, F, G. But there's one plan. There's one purpose. And God wants you to ha uh, be blessed and, and add to you and all these things. But he said, but seek first my kingdom. What, or seek first, put first my word and command on your life, and the rest will be added to you. So getting things in order, we're going to talk about this morning. But I want you to just see some things uh, as we look back over this year. Um, and we're going to go through a few slides. And then we have a, a, um, a video of just a few stories um, that we're going to look, look at uh, of just the impact of just even reaching one person. Because is it easy to, to, to rejoice over a thousand if I give you $1,000, oh, yeah. How about if I give you $1? I think sometimes we, we, we don't have the, we don't rejoice over what God rejoices over and what heaven rejoices over. Um, and so I want to, we're going to look at some of that stuff. But if you'll throw up some slides, I want to go over finances from last year, um, go over some, uh, just some highlights. I don't want to spend a ton of time here. Usually we, we printed a ton of stuff out before and went through that whole deal uh, and just to find them on the, you know, you know how it is. It's print. It's like, okay, that was cool. All right, let's go on. Um, 
But the annual report, just total revenue last year, um, if you can see, it's nine, at the bottom, 96, uh, nine, 900,000, 962,600 uh, dollars. Uh, that was last year's ties and offerings revenue, not just ties and offerings, but revenue, total revenue. You can see that our ties and offerings were 849,000 last year. Restricted funds where giving was given towards whether it was Christmas outreach or camp or maybe the hill or whatever it might be. Um, that's how much that was. Beyond Academy, as Beyond Academy came to a close, uh, Beyond Academy gave forty-two thousand dollars, or in a sense, supplemented uh, Beyond Church in that uh, that much uh, this last year. Awaken Coffee, uh, six thousand uh, dollars this year, and then just other income to revenue of uh, almost five thousand dollars. So that's a total of ninety-six. Um, okay, so expenses. You can see uh, what we have in personnel. That's uh, every, every person that's on staff. Um, Pastor Evan, myself, and Landon, and Courtney, and uh, Mona, and, and Ben, and I'm missing some, and Pastor Austin, and, and Kylie, and, okay? and all these things, are these people are fulfilling functions here in this community for, you as a ch- for us as a church, um, and it's just special to me to be able to have and have that impact. So this personnel, uh, ministries, uh, to break that down would be children's ministry, youth ministry, all, all, all ministry that goes on, goes on here. Giving, uh, impact into our community, um, giving through uh, missions around the world, uh, just 153,000. To break it all out would be just awesome, crazy, but complex. Um, operations, that's uh, insurance, uh, just keeping the building running, uh, electric, sometimes like it's stupid expensive. Um, uh, anyway, and so operations and then administrative fees, um, that's just like what you got to have legal things and, and, and insurance and that kind of stuff to keep things, uh, keep things working. So that's the total expense. Uh, and, you know, we, we give, I believe we give generously here. We have, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Ministry that's like we're going to spend the dollars that come in. Um, one thing that I don't think uh, I put on here is what the status of, uh, or to go to the next slide, if you will. I want to give an update. Let me, let me just pause that slide real quick. I want to give it a status of a, accounts real quick. Um, and I know you didn't uh, have that slide, and I, we didn't even talk about this. But um, just status of accounts. We have some ERC money um, that is a, the, to the tune of about $300,000 uh, that we haven't ever touched. That was during the global whatever uh, pandemic, all that kind of stuff. Um, when we had the daycare and we were keeping it open and because we were considered vital, all that kind of stuff. And just stewarding dollars, right? Uh, and we never spent that those dollars. We've had those just sitting in an investment account because we didn't know what, you know, we're not going to be limited in any way to preach the gospel. And if that was ever called back, we just have just let that set aside. And so that's still setting aside there. On top of that, we have some savings that we've set aside that's been put into that to the tune of about $80,000. And then on top of that, we have a Hill account um, that has about $100,000 in it. And we're going to be talking more about the Hill uh, in, in about mm, eight weeks. All right. So after after our board meeting right before Easter, we're going to be talking about the Hill. It's something that we started years ago um, before the pandemic and so on and so forth. It's something that it's been taking a little bit of time to get in 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 the right order uh, legally within our, within our house. And now we're we're excited about what does it look like to step forward and be a light in our community, and and be a local church. You know, if we're talking about only getting the word of God out. Right, like like going to all the world, but we forget about Jerusalem, or we forget about Alma and the impact the local church. The local church. We're a local church. We're a part of a local body. We're to be bringing as here on earth as it is in heaven here into Alma, Arkansas. It, it is to go there, but it is to be here. And so we're going to talk about that in in in, a, in a, the upcoming week. So that's just kind of a status of accounts. Um, you can see that this year uh, total. Go back to that last slide real quick. Um, just total dollars, expenditures. I mean, what's, what's that? Like Twenty-two thousand uh, dollars in the black. If you, uh, if my math's correct, uh, twenty. Yeah, about twenty-two, twenty-three thousand, right? Um, and so we're not like sitting on a huge cushion just from this last year. Um, matter of fact, uh, just I, I think we've just been kind of stale, honestly, as far as finance, financially, just pretty stable. Um, and yet at the same time, uh, I'm so thankful. Uh, because we've seen the amount of pe- givers increase, um, which is super amazing. Um, I do think that just looking at just uh, 
people that have given or not given or so on and so forth, you can see that the, the, the toll that uh, inflation has played on, on people's finances. And this is where we, we, every, every time we give, we, teach on, we need to teach on the, what the Word of God says about finances and you and I being, having increase. Because he wants his body to be able to give to the poor. He wants his body to not be limited to give unto every good work. If, if the body of Christ is the, the function of Christ here on this earth, if you and I are the function and we're limited because we're constricted finance, financially or physically or in our minds, peace of mind, then that the, we're being robbed from. God's being robbed from. you got to understand, we got to understand, when I'm constricted, it's not me that's constricted it's he that's constricted if we don't get that if we don't understand that and this is where that then then we don't really realize why God brings I am blessed truly to be a blessing to fulfill in no way will we be limited to serve our generation and that ha- that has to be something that that we have a conviction of that that wait a minute I need to take a stand not just for my needs to be met but to be the influence and the salt and the light here on this earth and that the church is to grow and to expand and its influence is to just carry out throughout the entire land but this is what we have to we have to get that conviction and we also need to take a moment and as we still are here in January to give a, re- a reflection and a status of our own accounts the Bible talks about, and I, I don't know how we got, I'm getting on all this, so this is just coming out, but man, I'll tell you what, uh, what does it look like uh, to, to, to serve the Lord? I'm bought with a price. I, I'm not my own. Therefore, I'm to glorify God in this body, which is his. If I was to look at my finances, would it, my finances speak of me giving glory to him or would it speak of me giving, this is a good thing to look at. As you got, uh, at, by the end of January... In America, by the 31st of January, all your giving letters where you gave are supposed to hit your mailbox. What does it look like? What does it look like? What does your giving look like? Does it look like even a tithe? Not just here. I'm talking about just all your giving letters. This is a conversation with a husband and a wife. This is a conversation that you need to have. You're going to do your taxes. Maybe you've already done them, trying to get that tax return. But if your tax, if your income, if your giving isn't even 10%, first of all, you can't even, so you're not even sowing. You don't even start sowing until you start tithing. First, you got to tithe. You're, you might be giving a little bit and you're working up to tithing, but you're not even sowing. Sowing is over and above the tithe. But this is a good thing to measure and to look at and, and look at what, what God says. Look, go back in what the, what the Word of God says, and what, what you and I, when you and I are giving, we're either serving God or we're serving mammon. We're serving money. What, is, what am I saying when I give? I'm saying who I, not only who I serve, but who provides for me. This is a big thing. Otherwise, I'm limited to just self, and I'm only going to give when, when I haven't consumed all of my seed. The thing about sowing and reaping, too, is this, that you reap what you sow. You can reap more than you sow. You don't always reap more than you sow because if you don't tend to it, you don't reap anything. But you will always reap after you sow. And I think that's one of the things sometimes that we, we, we get messed up. We're so in, uh, we, we don't realize that it's the after time that we, we need to invest into tomorrow. Anyway, so there's, there, there's uh, some things to look at. These are, this is just part of leading. Yeah. And you know what's so crazy? Is I'll, there's going to be people in this house, and God's building his church, and we're going to grow. And we're going to have greater influence in this community. And, and people are going to walk in the, the fullness to which they've been called. They're going to use their hands for the glory of God because they're going to be called upon it. And someone's going to ask them the question, what are you doing with that for the glory of God? And they're going to be able to give an account one day to the Lord and say, Lord, I did this. Because somebody was bold enough to ask him a question and say, what are you doing with that? But there will be other people because it's so bold and so straightforward and saying, listen, this is what the word says. You're not doing this. You're hearing this. And you're going to leave. And that's okay. That's okay. That's your choice. Everyone is not going to be a part of the vision of saying, 
As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This life, I'm not my own. I'm, gonna, I'm here for his purpose. There is really no plan B for me. That's it. And it's like, and one day we're going to say, well, you're done, or you're going to hear, well done. This is a, a question you and I have to, we have to, we have to weigh and we have to talk with our, our spouses about and say, what does it look like? Are, are, are we in my house serving the Lord or are, are we just existing and one day our kids are going to walk out of the house and, and having not imparted what we were meant to impart? These are real things. And this is why we come, the Bible says, to, and we gather in, in Ephesians, the same passage. He says that every part of the body, though we're one, each has a part in a specific function. In this chapter of Ephesians, it says that God gave us gifts. And he gave us pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, apostle to, uh, to equip and perfect the saints so that they could be out doing the work of the ministry. It's so important that we come together and we are equipped and we hear what God would say and we hear the word of God, unadulterated, unfiltered truth because in a world that's so filled with lies, I wrote this down, I was going through some notes earlier this week, in a world that is so filled with lies, take, you better make sure you're clear and you take advantage of telling the truth when you have the mic. In a world that's so filled with just oh, you know, whatever, you know, and just making somebody happy or saying something, doing something to get another click, another view, another like. I, I just want to say something so you can like me, click me, or get me more, more, more notoriety, more fame. Lord's like, in a world that's so filled with deceit, make sure you take advantage of telling the truth when you have the mic. And the truth is, what our heart is given to will be seen in what we give to. What our heart, where our heart is attached, it will be seen where our dollars are, go. It's a real thing. And, and, I, and, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about this because of feeling in a stale. I'm talking about this if, it, it, because if the finances are stale here, it's a lot to do because of a staleness here. Are, are, am I going to increase this year? Am I going to grow with God? Or am I going to just, is my family just going to stay just kind of what it is? Am I just going to exist? The pattern and the habits that I have and that I've demonstrated this year, when I look back, where, where will that be and where will I be in five years? If you make 100K a year as a, as a household and you gave five grand this year in giving, total giving, first of all, that's half of what, that's half. But with that habit, where do you think that'll lead you in five years? Do you think that, well, there's that vacation coming up, Hawaii, we could really use some of that? Do you think you're going to be more invested? Do you think your children are going to uh, be, be more under, in a sense, the, what the word of, or do you think you might just not be in the house of God at all in five years? Think about this. What you do today. We could do the same thing with your marriage. We're, based on the habits of what you and I are doing with our time while we're sitting before our phone or, or whatever, we're going to go on a date and while even on a date or we, have, we just have our phones out scrolling. With what's going on in that way right now, where do you think you'll be in five years? When you have an opportunity with your kids to talk to them about something or to lead by example and discipline and to get the Bible out and you read the Bible, not your phone, so that they know what you're reading... So you can teach and demonstrate, but we're not willing to do that. Where do you think and what do you think your kids are going to be doing in five years? It matters what we do. You know what matters? It matters that somebody tells us the truth, not according to what, what some self-help message and tickle me, but according to what was and what is and what will remain. And that's the truth of God's word. You know, this right here, where, where there's a place of uh, sin abounding, this right here is the grace and the empowerment to, to overcome that even to the more. Yeah, 
Grace abounds even more. This word right here, the very living word of God, the truth, has the ability to set you free in finances to where money doesn't tell you what to do. You tell money what to do, and you're limited in no way because God's like, hey, I'm going to pour through that, that, that the, I want to pour through them. You have, if you're blessed in a way, I'm telling you, I was blown away uh, by one, a, a, a member, family member here at church and what they gave this year. Holy smokes. Just poof, blew the socks off of, my, of like, holy cow. Uh, just wow. And, you know, I, I believe there's extreme rewards for that. But, you know, here's the thing about Generosity. Generosity is not a dollar and it's not a hundred dollars. It's based on what you have. God celebrated a widow's might because she gave with all of her might. She gave with her heart, said, Lord, I want to bring this to you. It wasn't some tip. It wasn't some tip. Like, I can't think of it that way i got to think of it this, that we are one body and there's one purpose and one vision that we are to be bringing the message of the gospel, preaching Jesus, everyone, everywhere, every day. When I'm at work, I'm, I'm, I, my job is a ministry as unto the Lord. And that I'm thinking in my, that my very life, my very heartbeat truly is for His glory. And He takes care of all of your rations, all of that you need, and he takes care of you in wonderful style. He takes care of his kids in wonderful style. He loves that. He loves seeing you blessed and driving that vehicle that you were wanting as long as that vehicle's not driving you. He loves when things are in order, when things are working. When the relationships work, when, when your finances work, when your body works. Because you're under authority. See, here's the thing. I think sometimes we don't realize this. Is, is that in heaven we think that it's going to be less authority. Can I tell you what heaven is really going to be like? You're going to do what he says. It. Like, we don't know king. Like, we're going to find it out. And you're going to like it. You're going to love it. Why? Because his words were life to me, and I did eat them. Like he says, David says, your words, they were, they, were like, they, they satisfied me. They were what brought health to me. They, 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 they brought goodness to me. They brought joy to me. They brought increase to me. They, nothing missing, nothing lacking. It was your words. He's what holds it all up. He's what holds it all up. And you know, he still is doing that now. If we'll come under that, it's like my world will just be all held up by him. And the pressure on me, it'll be like the pillars are his words, his wisdom that's holding up my world instead of my arms and my hands and my foot. His wor words, his, wo his ways, his wisdom truly are and is our I guess it would be our, our, the pillars that are to be holding up our life to where we don't have to. It's the ways of God. The ways of God. And when we come in line with the ways of God, we work with, in a sense, ancient paths. Ancient not being old, that which existed before us and will exist after us. Like the ancient of days. Cooperate with kingdom principles. And your life your marriage, I'll tell you where you'll be in five years. You'll be in a brighter place, filled with more hope and fulfillment for the glory of God. So, man, I'll tell you one of the greatest things you can do is you can sit down and take inventory and give an account. In order to give an account, you have to count. And that's part of coming in order. To come in order, you're going to have to set things, you're going to have to count, or you're going to have to see the, the pattern. You're going to have to at least take time to look at what is there. It's two blue and then one red and two blue and then one red. You're going to have to look and you're going to have to assess where am I and be honest and say, where am I at? These are important things. So as we look back at 2023, it's not just to celebrate. It's, it's to recall and to understand 
where am I at? And, 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 and did, here's, here's a good question for me, because this is not the plan of God for my life. It would be good to not look at 2023 only. It would be look, good to look at 2017, 2018, 2019, all the way to now. And you look. And y'all, uh, here's what I'll tell you. You can look at your giving, and you can see, you, you'll be able to see where where your heart is, and not only where your heart is, but you'll be able to look and go, wow, it is, it is amazing. Look at our family. We're serving the Lord. <laughs> wow. And you'll, or you'll look, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, we're still here. <laughs> Just, or it might go, be looking like this. We've kind of got some things out of order. These are good things. When you look back, it, 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 am I just going in circles? Because I'll tell you what, if you, if you are, a trial is going to come again. E.J. James, he says, count it all joy when you fall into trials and temptations. He says, knowing that, that it's to work patience. But if you're at the same test again, you know what you and I need? Wisdom. Because a test is not to be taken again and again. It's the pass. We're to move on up. Our, your influence is to increase. You're to become the senior of the high school. Telling the kindergarten, what's up, bro? I go, he just said hi to me. That's the starting football player. That's the, that's the quarterback. The quarterback just said, as a, as, as a fifth grader you know, of the school, it's like, hey, man, what's up? You're, you're to be the one that is there to be the influencer, the, the, the salt, the light, the pulling people up, pulling people out because you passed some tests. Yeah. So when somebody is hopeless and hurting, you have something to give them because you passed the test, which means you came under God's word, and so you went up. And you came under God's word, and so you went up. And if you come under God's word, you can go up. And because you went up, now you can truly reach down and have influence, and somebody can hear what you're saying, and they'll hear the very life of God, and you'll be able to pray for somebody and give them a word of hope in season because you hold it as truth. Because I, too, am a man under authority. Only speak the word. Something can happen because you have come under the word. So this is, that's the annual report part. So just keep going. There's good stuff. There's all good. I don't even know how I got on that. I wasn't to land. It's like, hey, are you going to mention a few other things? I said, yeah, probably. You know. But here's some cool things. 825 app downloads. I, uh, just that jacks me up because of, of, of the, you know, the, the subsplash where the Bible reading. I, I'm telling you, we've seen more discipleship happen this year than I believe we've seen in, in, consistently in many years. That blesses my heart. It's like, Lord, this is what I can give an account for. And you know, the power, I, I remember Jeremy Pearson talking about this and he said, you know, it's not how many are in attendance, it's how many are in agreement. If one can put 1,000 in a flight, two could put 10,000. Like, what, what could it, nothing that they imagined to do could be withheld from them. I'm giving you scriptures and passages of the Tower of Babel or, or come into agreement or a mighty wall. Remember the wall that was built by a few men in only a few days? They said it couldn't be done in years. Because Nehemiah rallied some troops, and they fought and built at the same time. Wow. I think we're in that time of fighting and building at the same time and seeing great things. And what you thought was going to take 10 years will just happen in two. I think we're at that time where it looks like this, and it seems like my kids are so far behind, and you can just watch them because you're tending and you're all at the same time. I think we're in that time. And so app downloads, that's so cool. So 825 app downloads. Uh, uh, it, we just started keeping track of this. And so Facebook minutes this year. Um, wow, that's a lot of Facebook minutes. 41,800 minutes watched. Uh, 100, in only 137 posts. We uh, 2,500 uh, 2, followers. YouTube impressions. This is where we just really started getting YouTube going. Um, that many impressions. That you know, that many hours watched. Obviously, Facebook, you can see a lot of people are there. Um, Instagram, um, we have now have 100,000, 100, uh, or excuse me, 1,000 followers and 25,000 people reached. In other words, impressions. But this is cool, a good start. Next year, you're going to see this in, increase a lot. 
Uh, one of the things that this last year, uh, end, of, end of August, beginning of September, we brought on um, a, a, a social media slash get the word out kind of guy, um, and that's Ben Schlegel. Um, he's actually my cousin, uh, but just a gifted Lord called and uh, we're excited about that, what's going to be coming about. And just keep being present with the word. Man, a word of hope. You know, the word, is, it's, it's not always just, um, the word of God is not always just, oh, that made me feel good. Sometimes the thing that makes you feel good is when something's out of place and it gets corrected. The chiropractor kind of hurts. <laughs> You're going to be sore for a few days, but you're going to be right. You're going to be whole. You're going to function better. And so it's important for us to have the word in all of its ways out there. Let's see, keep on going. So that's online stats. This is something cool, some things we're, we're tracking. Um, you know, it's funny, on salvations, uh, we, we, there's been a lot more people prayed with uh, through the body than that. But it just today I was going through some testimonies, and I remember uh, one of them that we obviously didn't make it there is kids that got prayed for. There was more than that in just one Sunday morning uh, class time. So anyway, cool stuff. We got we we're, we're looking at trying to figure out how do you track all the testimonies and when or not testimonies, but even tracking salvations and even thinking about tracking salvations. If we're not walking with people to see them grow up in Christ, what did that number tell you? Did it just tell you this? You know, sometimes we have to be careful of what numbers tell us. Because sometimes we have to ask the question, if that number's higher, does that make it mean that I don't have to do anything? Here's, my, here's the question that I would ask on there. Was, the one, was one of those from you? Was one of those from me? Outside of right here. It's a good question. As we look back and we, we say, what, Lord, what do you, wow. Because I can tell you one thing. There's been a lot of people pray with people to receive Christ this year. And we don't have them all right there. And that's okay. And that's okay. Baptisms. 33 people we've ba- uh, seen give the... Oh, man, I had this cool vision yesterday. Oh, well, I don't know why I'm squirreling there. But I had this bit uh, of the hill. And, uh, and I, I don't know how it'll come about, but I just saw it. I was just, I was spending time reading yesterday morning and I've always wanted that pond to have a, have you ever seen these YouTube videos, a uh, catch, clean and kill or what clean, what, what do they call it? Uh, catch, clean and cook. Okay. If you're a young boy, you've seen the hundred of them. I have a Caleb and it's a big thing on YouTube where they catch it, clean it and cook it. Okay, whether it's a deer, or a squirrel, or a, or a fish. And I thought, you know, how cool would it be to have a bunch of catfish up there in that pond and have a big fishing derby where you catch, clean, and cook the fish for them all while talking about loaves and fishes? That would be so cool. And then the next week having a baptism at the Rudy Creek or even in the, you know, the fishing, fishing pond. Probably not the pond, but uh, anyway. <laughs> I just thought that I just could see it. I could just see utilization of of a place for the glory of God. And it just got me excited in my heart as young kids are catching fish and get on a fishing pole and they're getting their catfish cooked they're like, and they're eating the fish. And, and I just saw these things built for the glory of God. What, what is that? That's just showing Jesus. You know, you think about Jesus, which is the wisdom of God to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 30, 1 verse 30. He says that Jesus was made unto us wisdom Righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Jesus was made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. What, we so many times only think of Jesus as being our righteousness. In other words, we're justified. Sanctification meaning we're purified. And, and redemption, right? We think of Jesus, that's his work. But did you know that Jesus was made unto us wisdom? Did you know that your life and my life, we were created with no plan B, with one purpose, and God has wisdom or works where you can apply the knowledge and the word of God, and you can say, ooh, this would be something to bring God glory. Oh, we could bring God glory this way at school. Oh, we could bring God glory this way in ideas and and, and ways, in a sense, to create just the atmosphere of love and heaven on earth comes just from Jesus because Jesus was made unto you wisdom. 
And wisdom is, is understanding how to apply knowledge. It's the works. It truly is the works of faith. Wisdom truly is the works of faith. The wisdom from above is the works of faith. All right. So um, anyway, so you go on and, and you can see uh, just the new guests and church life events and attendance average serve team. How about that? Compared to attendance, that's amazing. That's how many people are, are currently on the serve team. Uh, that's awesome. And that includes young babies all the way up through, in other words, that attendance number. So you can see that kids that are just too young, that's pretty good. That's pretty awesome. So I, I love that. That's What does that mean? Just full court, four, full court followers of Christ. Um, uh, joined the serve team, 45 this year. Kids in youth camp, we sent 97 kids or youth to camp this year. That's incredible. And through generosity. That's what's so awesome. That's one of the things, I think, when I think about this house and these people, I think generosity. But you, this is something sometimes when, uh, when that's said from the pulpit, sometimes we hear it and we think, oh, those are my shoes. But they might not be yours. Just be what you're going to see in this video, you might not have been per- a participant. And if, if that's true, this is a good day. Because somebody's telling you something. And that's that one day we're going to give an account. And it's not too far away. Not just of what you and I did, but of what we were supposed to do. We're not just judged on what we do. We're judged on based on what we were supposed to do. There is no plan B for your life. God blessed you in that way. He gave you that grace or that gifting or that talent to be used for his glory. You think about that. Wow, this is a good day. This is a good day as we look back, as we reflect, as we celebrate. And then as we look, and we're going to see this this video, as we look at, wow, what my peace is. Get that. Absolutely. You're going to see just stories of uh, of just different people, just their peace. No, my peace, every ligament, every ligament, every little piece, how vital it really is as you play your part for the glory of God. And that you would see your value. you got to see your value so that you utilize and steward the gift that you are. You're you're called. Your gift, you're called. I'm called. When I recognize that, things things change. Uh, Awaken sales. You can see 188,000 in sales this last year. Other highlights, young adult ministry. Uh, I would tell you, it's amazing. I I look at young adults and, like, I see Trent and Dickie over there with the hat, you know. What a stud. <laughs> All these young, adult, young adults serve in Christ. A young adult ministry started this year. That blesses my socks off. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. It, 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 and we have uh, young adult leaders, and Drew, Drew and Chloe over here. How awesome is that? Yeah. Special. People pouring in to these young people, training them up, calling them out. Somebody take them out for coffee. Somebody here, take out a young man or a young woman for coffee and tell them something. Think about this. we got to do these things. This is why when we come to Frontline, we need to not just come sit and talk to our own three. Or, or when we have the ladies' Galentine event, which you're going to hear about. Uh, okay? All right. Um, again, other highlights, hire a digital content producer. Right, we talked about that. Um, Christmas outreaches. It, it, on the original slide, it said epic Christmas outreaches. And I want to still say epic Christmas outreaches because we're still getting thank you cards in the mail. Um, handwritten notes, the impact was incredible. Now, I want to just go over those numbers because I, we never gave a, 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 an update from the stage. It was going to happen, and then we had snow. All this, all the, just here we are January, middle of January, and it was just right at a month ago. Sometimes it feels like forever ago. But 278 inmates were, were, were given gifts. But can I tell you, 278 inmates heard the love of God. Because we came with gifts, but we came with the message of God's love. Not just, oh, here's salvation, but just we want to love on you today. It was so cool. It was, it was so cool. Like uh, I was there with 12 or 16 people. I don't know how many there was there, was there bringing all these gifts. And, and it was like the first one that was like, hey, Pastor Nate, you want to say something? And I was like, okay, I'm going to say something. And then after that, I'm not saying anything else because every person here has 
the same God in them. And it, and I, it was so cool. And it just, man, these ladies and these guys were speaking up. And it was like, tag, you're it, Chad. And Chad's like, oh, okay. It was so awesome. No, this is so awesome. He, he, he said, I mean, I didn't tell him I was going to say, hey, all right, yeah, Chad, you have something. And, you know, Chad, he starts talking. And when he starts talking, there was a tremble in his voice. And this tremble moved into just power. Can I tell you, you and I, we have so much, you have so much in you that the world has to hear. Oh, it was so cool just listening to ladies talk and say things to these ladies that were broken and, and just watching their countenance change. Watch Grace. I, just, I mean, I just see these different faces that we're with and just the power that came out when, when you spoke. God, yeah. lives. When you visited me in prison. Remember that? When you clothed me. When you visited me. That's what well, that that we got there at ten o'clock. We left at two. Visiting, so cool. Fifty-four housing authority um, at the Al- Alma Housing Authority, which is dead downtown Alma. Fifty-four families that were given Christmas in just extravagant ways. Just I can't tell you how many t- how many cards we've never we haven't been blessed like that. I I don't think we've ever been blessed like that. Thank you. Just the love of God on display. Uh, the, the families of, of 68 foster care angels, the amount of gifts, it was astounding. 60, over $16,000 raised in, in funds, and we had ladies shopping. So sometimes when you're trying to raise a certain amount because you got to go buy it and you're not trying to shop for deals, there was ladies shopping, finding God deals on this and this, and then favor and minutes given to us again by, for, for the inmates to where the cost was going to be this, but there, here's another three grand. It, it, but yet we didn't have to pay for it. So we got everything done for $16,000, and then obviously way more was given through. God. Oh. Like, it was amazing. The gifts that you guys bought for these kids. I was in there sneaking the peek of, you know, behind (laughs) remote control cars and things that are just awesome. God gives big. Listen, he gives big to his children. You're his children. We We have to learn not to just sow. But as much as sowing is a learned thing, so is harvesting. So is reaping. You ever, you ever try to pick corn? Maybe, maybe you don't know about growing corn. You know, the husk or the silk on the top will turn brown. But just because it turns brown doesn't mean it's ready. You have to know how to feel the cob. Where the top of the cob, you'll feel that they're swollen, and when you squeeze it, it'll, it'll burst. So you walk down, and there'll be corn that comes off a week different on that same row than the cobs that you pick that day. It takes understanding on how to harvest corn or how to harvest a watermelon knock 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 what well, sounds like at the store click cut it open white i thought they were supposed to be red it takes we have to learn to receive and learn to harvest not just to sow god wants his children blessed that part of just you and i just receiving that he wants you and i increased amen all right, um, and so I'm going to end with uh, this, these slides with that. And I want you to sit and watch this video. You have, want to add something to this? No? Nope. That was enough, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, so go ahead and watch, the, watch this video. It's, it's about a 12-minute video. Um, it, I think it will really bless you. It's blessed me a ton. How did you come to be on church? Um... And it's two years next month. I started a job at a coffee shop Mm -hmm. and uh, quickly went from being a, uh, first I was actually a customer. I came in and would just read and then started working here and uh, it quickly became a family and a place that I love to be in relationships with the pastors and stuff. And so, I think I was here for almost seven months, six months. Um, and then I uh, was sent out and uh, got my foot. <laughs> um, um, after my internship was over and uh, was 
had visited a couple times and then a couple months ago, I think like September, I just, the Lord was like, this is where I want you to be, this is where I want you to grow. Um, this is this is where you're supposed to be. So I committed to a month of like, okay, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna be here for a month consistently with community, with the young adults. Um, that was really also where my community was at. And so um, ever since then, it's just been a, an experience that has been none like any of my others with uh, growing up in the church and being a part of church. Um, this really is my church home. And uh, God has done so much through um, the coffee shop and the church. And I'm so thankful um, just to be a part of it and to say that this is home for me. We need to share our testimony. It is just a glimpse of God's goodness and how he's always pursuing his children and how we get to partner with him. So when Henley was in third grade, she was in public school. The teacher always seemed to seat her by a particular boy that it was very evident that he had a hard home life by the things that he said and the things that he did. And we knew it wasn't by accident that Henley was always by him because we prayed for God to use Henley. Do you want to share how he used you? Yeah, I felt like I was supposed to write on a piece of paper that God loves him and put it in his desk and um, yeah. A few times, yeah. huh? And then at recess one day, what happened? Um, I, told, I asked him what his favorite movie was and I said my favorite movie is The uh, Son of God. And not necessarily our favorite movie, but it was just a way for her to just, God just wanted to you know, get in that conversation because his movie was something like really scary. And what did he say about movies? That um, he felt like he thought that God made all of the movies that he was in bad. Yeah, he just ruined them. God yeah. just ruined them. Not true, huh? And then he also one time commented about how God took his dad away or something like that. And so we just, we saw this boy from God's heart and we just started praying over him. Well, um, a few months into her third grade year, we knew that we were to start homeschooling. So um, we started that journey. And so she wasn't near this little boy, but we saw him a few times at Walmart and different things. And it wasn't by coincidence. And we had been praying um, for over a year and a half. And one day, Henley and I, we were both serving in the third through fifth grade classroom. And he showed up with another little boy in the class. And she was so excited. She was like, oh my goodness, so-and-so is here. And I was just, we were just so excited. Like, God, you've brought him here. Um, and so had an amazing time. He had an amazing time. We got to the point where we asked if anyone wanted to receive Jesus into their hearts. And he rose his hand. And so he did. He asked Jesus into his heart. That day, God transformed his life. Um, he felt the love of God as a father. And we're just so thankful that we got to be a part of that. And we're so thankful that we got to actually see the fruit of it because we know not everyone gets that. Hello from the Fishers Hi, here in Beyond Istanbul, Church. Turkey. Uh, just a recap of what you've helped do and accomplish through us uh, in the Middle East, in one of a very unreached place. Mm -hmm. um, and so many Muslims have been discipled in the Bible and evangelize on the streets and in our home uh, and even Iranians is, that have escaped Iran and come to Turkey have been given Bibles some uh, one had been gloriously filled with the Holy Spirit recently and a move of the Holy Spirit has been introduced to the Turkish church here um, and really making headway for a move of God in this nation in this region and even in this time with the with the conflict in the Middle East. What a time to be alive. Mm. And you've also aided us to help uh, in one of the most devastating catastrophes, the earthquake that happened this year in Turkey, and to really be light in the region. So we're really positioning ourselves, a ministry base has been established here, and to be able to plant churches and Bible schools in the future. And God is doing great things here. Thank you so much from we the bottom of our hearts. Guys. We love you. Thank you for praying for us. Yes. Hey, Pastor Nate, Evan, and the Beyond Church family. Tanya and I want to greet you from here in Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We want to thank you for your partnership throughout 2023. It was really a great year. And, and through your prayers and support, you were able to help us, our team, go into eight different nations to 
preach the word and to help raise up leaders. And specifically here in the Congo, it was a super exciting year. We had the first graduating class of the first French-speaking Rama Bible Training College campus here in Africa that received their diplomas on July 8th. As a matter of fact, if you look across the globe, uh, we had uh, five graduation services that took place in five different nations, three continents, and the Caribbean. It was really quite a, an exciting year. And what's even more encouraging than, than to think about all of these hundreds of graduates that you helped train is to think about the stories behind each and every one of them. Uh, we have people that are planting churches, starting new ministries. So they're not only leading families and leading churches, we actually have the, the top general of the Congolese army that's planting churches and, and lead, as he leads the army. So great things are happening and we're thankful for your prayers. We're thankful for your support. And we're super excited, not only for what God has done, but we know he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that 2024 is going to be an awesome, fruitful year. We're excited about fulfilling the vision of bringing the gospel to the 34 nations and 11 territories of the French-speaking world. And just know that you're playing a vital role in making that vision a reality. We love you and we appreciate you. I've had the privilege to be able to grow up in church nearly my entire life. My mom, she was the one that led me to Jesus when I was six years old. My dad, he didn't go to church. He wasn't a Christian. He didn't want anything to do with church. But my dad, he was a good, not just a good father, he was a great father. The best anyone could ever ask for. As I grew in my faith, a burden for my dad, for his salvation grew. I would go talk to my dad about Jesus and his love for him, but he wouldn't have anything to do with it. He would shut me down before I could even get started. He could tell what I came to talk to him about. Over the years, I would continually try, but I would continually get shut down. After coming back from church camp, I could see a change in my dad. His health was declining, but his heart was different. One evening, I went to see him, and this time, things were different. I was able to share with him Christ's love for him and what Jesus done for him on the cross, and this time, he wanted it. This time was different. As we sat there and we prayed, all the walls that he had built up for so long, all the burdens that he had been carried, he gave them away. That evening with his hands lifted high and tears coming down his face, he surrendered his life to Jesus. 35 years of praying for my dad, I was able to see the manifestation of his salvation that night. Weeks later, after Dad gave his life to Jesus, Dad went to go see Jesus. He's not with us here on this earth today. He's where we all want to be one day. I encourage you, stand strong in your faith. Stand strong on what you're believing for. God's promises are a yes and amen. His word is the final authority. Stand strong. My name is Dylan Flanagan, and uh, so, Whenever I was really young, my biological father, he wasn't the best man. He treated me, my mother, and my little brother very poorly. We were abused and mistreated. And so as we were going through all that, our relationship with God wasn't always the best just because, you know, we were never around church because we were with him. And so as I got older and stuff and we departed ways from him, I still was very lost and didn't understand like God and didn't understand that whole concept. And then we met my father, who I have now, and he slowly started bringing us back into that. We got closer with God for a while, going through my, uh, about, it'd be my sixth grade year, all the way through my freshman year. Um, we had been going to a church called Grace over in Alma, and we, I had learned a lot from there and everything that I knew up until I started going to beyond. Um, as I was going through all of that, about my freshman year hit, and um, my, gr my grandpa got sick. And also while that was happening, our church got shut down. So we just, we kind of felt lost. We felt like, you know, I, or at least I felt like that, you know, God wasn't there on my side. And so I, I kind of distanced myself from him. And whenever you know, we were going through all that, I let myself into get, get into worldly things that I shouldn't have. And I felt horrible about it. But um, luckily now I'm, doing a lot better, not having to worry about all that. And get, so went through all that and then my junior year hit. And I'd, I'd tried Beyond a few times just from invites from a couple of friends and stuff. And then 
Uh, so I tried all that, and then I, we were playing basketball at the intermediate school one day, me and a couple of friends. And Austin and Kyle came up to us and just started talking to us and then gave us an invite to go to Beyond, which just made it feel even more welcoming. And while we were going to Beyond, I just I learned a lot. I gained so much knowledge. I got out of my worldly things, you know, just started to really, really push towards God. And whenever um, my senior year hit, we started to go and uh, do, like, other things with the church. So we did one week, and... That one, at one week, it's where I decided to, uh, you know, do my outward expression of sh showing that I was saved and stuff. And so I got baptized through the church, and it was the greatest moment of my life. And then um, I've been, and ever since then, I've been, you know, doing s stuff through the church. I've, I now uh, serve on the serve team. I am with young adults, and I have honestly gained more knowledge in these past two years of going to Beyond than I have ever had and ever, probably ever will, honestly, just because of how much they push and inspire me to become a better man and become a better Christian. Years, years ago, I got hurt really bad in church from the pastor. Tried four or five different churches and was never really taken in. And so finally I decided I don't have to go to church. I can serve God without going in. Well, I found out the hard way I wasn't that strong. I slipped away too far. I need God's people. I need to be around what's going on. Sherry had been looking for a church, and I had, because we'd been to several of them, and it was never really a part of it, nothing. She kept telling me about this church. And I was like, and I was having nightmares about it. the devil himself. He didn't want me in this church. He did not want me to and finally, I agreed to go with her one day. She pulled up out front and opened the car door. She was driving. I put my right foot out of it. And the second it hit the pavement, I could feel the power of God. Because I felt it many years ago before I walked away. But I mean, nothing like that. I could feel it. I walked through the door. Everybody here is real. They walk up and talk to you. They shake your hand. They know you're here. And I wasn't used to that. And that scared me. So I didn't come back for a couple of weeks. Then I said, man, what he done for me, I'm going. And so I'm here. And now then, instead of me putting off Sunday to go fishing or do this or that, to be by myself, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. True story. Can I give you a hug? You betcha. All right. Awesome. And you know what? We're we're in the family of God together. This place is awesome. It's cool. So many stories. You just when you look back, you go, "That was this year." You know, you hear about the things over in in the Middle East or or Israel. Uh, they just. In one, one, one weekend, I don't remember how many tens of thousands of dollars, just that quick. The generosity, the love, the kindness. Um, it just it's The church is not a logo, and it's not a pastor. It's a people. And it's every part functioning. And I want to just close. Um, I want to I want to I want to close this morning by reading two passages. And I'm not going to take a lot of time to preach them, but I want to read them. And I want to read Genesis 17, and then I want to read 1 Corinthians, or excuse me, I want to read Ephesians 1, starting in 15 through the end of the chapter. I want to just um, maybe give you a picture of what God came to Abraham to say. If you don't know, if you know about Abraham at all, God, he's the father of our faith. He's where all the Jewish people came from. Um, you'll find in Genesis 15 where God cuts covenant with him and tells him how he'll be a father and uh, he'll bless him and all these kind of things. And um, here we find in Genesis 17 that Abraham uh, has had a child, by, not by the promise or by Sarah, um, but by Hagar and had Ishmael. And so God shows up, and here's what he, this is just a paraphrase, and then we're going to read it. He says, hey, Abe, 
What you doing? What you been up to? Hey, what you been up to? And I'm going to start reading in Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abraham was 99, this is a big, important part. Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I'm God Almighty. He said, walk before me and be blameless. Or um, walk before me uh, entirely with truth. When he says, walk before me, he literally says this. Walk before me naked. In other words, let nothing hidden or, un, or, or covered from me. And don't, don't, he said, be blameless, be honest, be, be truthful. And so in this passage of Genesis 17, God's coming to a covenant man, who, someone he's in covenant with. Did you know God's in covenant with you if you're born again? So God, this is a picture of God coming to a covenant man who, who, who stood on and walked with the promises of God and wanted the, what God said he could do. And he, he wanted what God wanted. But here he is 13 years later. And he is kind of a little bit off of where and not doing anymore. He had stopped doing what God created him for. In other words, he wasn't trying to have a child anymore with his wife, Sarah. Because he had a child with his wife, now, Hagar. And Hagar, Hagar was, was the maidservant of Sarah, or Sarai at the time. So when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. And I, I mentioned this last week. When he says that, what do you think it sounds like when he says, I'm God Almighty? Well, we see here in verse 3, Abraham fell face down. It must have been pretty powerful. So sometimes we read over things and left our imagination, or we don't imagine what was really going on. God showed up, said, I'm almighty God. Walk before me. Be perfect. Then Abraham fell face down and said to him, as for me, and God said to him, as for me, this is a covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram, but your name will be Abraham. I have made you a father of many nations. He said, I'm going to change your name, and I'm, going to tell, I'm telling you, you are a father of many nations. And I'm going to tell you this this morning. There's things that God has said to you that you've stopped saying about yourself, and you've got to start saying it again. This is, we're talking about starting with one. There's one plan for your life. There's not a plan B. There's one plan. There is a perfect will of God according to Romans chapter 2. Or 12 verse 2, there's a perfect will of God for your life. And in order to walk in that, we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We have to think like he thinks. Sometimes we get into a place because of what hasn't happened or time has gone by, and we move into a place of thinking, well, that was just a figment of our imagination, or that was just something that just will never happen. But I'm just here to tell you this morning that it's time you get back out and you start saying again what God said about you. God said it was important enough to be said that I told Abraham, I need to change your name from Abram to Abraham. You need to be saying what God says or what I say about you. So I want to tell you this morning, with the things and the pictures that he's placed in your heart, you need to give voice to them because there is no plan B. And your, your words truly are the steering wheel of your life. I will make you, verse 6, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you, I will make nations of you, and kings will descend from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And to you and your descendants, I will give the land where you are residing, all the land of Canaan as an eternal possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants and generations after, and this is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, which you are to keep. Every male among you must be circumcised. You are to circumcise the flesh of the foreskin, and this will be a sign of covenant between you and me. He's saying, you're going to have a covenant. I'm cutting a covenant with you, and what I told you before, I'm telling you again, and I'm going to make you very aware uh, that I am the one that's going to bring forth your seed. 
circumcision, if you don't, hopefully you know, but it, it is on the male and where the seed comes from. And God cut covenant with where the seed comes from, and he's declaring to him that I will perform what I said. I will be the one that brings about what I just declared to you. And you will know it, and so we're all the generations after will know that, I, that they're in covenant with me. He says, verse 14, But if any male is not circumcised, he will be cut off from his people, and he will be, have broken my covenant. Verse 15, God said to Abram, Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, do not call her Sarai, for her name shall be Sarah. And I will bless her, and I will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will descend from her. I will, again, Abraham and Sarah, both of those are signifying of the breath of God that is, is carrying their life. It's him that's going to be the sustainer, and he's the one that's not only the author, but also the finisher. He's the author or the illustrator. He's the one that brings it about. For you're in my life, there is no plan B. He is the author. And he wants, if we come under his, under what he says, and we partner with what he says, and we begin to declare what he says about our lives, he'll be able to illustrate it. And so he said, you now don't just partner with my, with your name, but you declare her name. You know what? Sometimes we just miss it. And we say what we think, and we say what we see. But according to Romans 4, that God calls those things that are not as though they are. We need to start calling them the things that we don't see according to what God said they would be. Yeah. Concerning your life, concerning your finances, concerning your health, concerning your children, concerning your mind. Yeah. It's important. These things are important. This is the, again, start with one. This is, Brother, Brother Marty talked about this, how we're going to walk with God this year. We're going to walk with God this year by, by, by giving Him praise, by, because our mouth, keeping the praise in our, in our tongue. How many of you have been doing that still? Singing praise, and it keeps you mindful of and, and listening to Him. And this is what this is about, walking with Him. Verse 19, or excuse me, I, um, let me go back to verse 16. I will bless her and give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will descend from her, from her. But Abraham fell face down, and he laughed, and he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Do you remember what we read at the very beginning? How old was Abraham? Here he says 100. Why? Because he calculated He calculated it as impossible. It wasn't he was saying he was a, he was thinking, he was he was thinking. That's a year from now. Can a can a man have? Because he said this, you're going to have a son next year. Can a man who's a hundred? He wasn't a hundred. He was ninety nine. But he was thinking it's it's too late. Look, he thought it through. This doesn't look possible. How many times do does our calculation cause us to respond? into a place of settling. Here's what he says. Abraham fell face down and he laughed and he said to him, uh, to himself, can a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Can Sarah give birth to, uh, at, at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live under your blessing. Just use my Ishmael. Just, do, just bless what I've been working on. Just bless. I know I've been doing, uh, doing this. I know there's that picture that you've called me to. I know you've called me to write that book. I know you've called me to, to, to sow in this way. I know you've called me to steward this business or to start this. I know you've called me to, to serve. I know you to step out. And I, I know, I, I know, I, I, I know. But Lord, I'm just asking you just to bless me and bless what I've done. Sometimes we're settling for things that are not God's part, God's portion. And we're asking, and for 13 years, he'd stopped. And God didn't say, well, Tom, time's gone too by. You've been too going the other direction. No, he came to him because he's in covenant with you. He's in covenant with me. He comes and says, hey, what about this? What about that? 
But God replied, he said, after he said, hey, can you just let Ishmael be the blessing? But God replied, your wife, Sarah, will indeed bear you a son. And you are to name him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants and for his descendants after him. And he went on to say, as for Ishmael, I, I have heard you and I will bless him as well. Verse 22, when he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. Verse 23, on that day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born of the house or purchased with his money, every male among the members in Abraham's household, and he circumcised them just as God had told him. So Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on the same day, and all the men of Abraham's house hold both servants born in the household, and those purchased from foreigners were circumcised with him. And the story is that a son was born the next year. Can I tell you one of the greatest mistakes we make is not considering God Almighty when we think about what he said. This year, as you step into your tomorrow, let God Almighty be the chief factor of your consideration concerning whatever might come, whatever, wherever you're at, or whatever the Lord has called you to step into. We're going to talk in the weeks to come about wisdom, about beginning to, to not just believe something, not just to have faith, but to, to walk with it. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. It ceases to exist. Faith is like the bridge that takes things from, from the eternal reality to a temporal one. It's the bridge, but if, if I don't have any cart, if I don't have any actions to move what I believe, I have a bridge, but I don't have the flow of heaven from here to here. What does that look like? We're going to talk about that in the coming weeks. The start of it, the start of it is that when you and I consider or you and I hear something in our heart or we're reminded by the Holy Spirit of what he's called us to or we're, we catch a glimpse of something or we hear something that he says about us that we don't see about ourselves, it's like Peter. Peter was not rock. He was Simon, shaky reed. God said rock. When we hear God say something, we have to have the chief factor of our consideration be that God Almighty. God Almighty, El Shaddai showed up and said, hey, what you been working on, Abe? Can I tell you, he probably, not probably, he had to go back to work. He had to go back to, to being with Sarah, his wife. He had quit in, on the hope of having a child with his wife. He had to put some things back in action. That's powerful. The works. Doing the works of what you believe. Doing the works of what you believe. Let's go to Ephesians chapter, chapter 1, starting in verse 15. And so this is what we're going we're gonna to be talking about in the weeks to come. We're not going to just talk about the power of God. We're not going to just talk about the hope of God. We're going to talk about what he asked for first, this prayer that's inspired by God to pray over the church by Paul. He prays, he says, for this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, because you came under the authority of God, God authored and he now wants to illustrate or bring about the action to your days. And he's saying, since I've heard about this, this is what I'm praying for you. Since I've heard that you've come under, I'm praying, uh, I'm praying for you. I do not cease, verse 16, to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto you a spirit of wisdom. Wisdom, I believe, is the Bible tells us it's the principal thing. It's the principal thing. Though it costs, Proverbs 4, 7, though it costs you all you have, go get it. Jesus, 1 Corinthians 1, 3, or 1, 30, he says this, Christ was made unto us wisdom. So many times we skip over that. The wisdom is the, the ability to take knowledge and apply it. There, is, there are spiritual truths. There are things that God has said to you, but we don't know how to put one foot in front of the other. 
We, we just want something to happen one day, but we don't know how it's supposed to happen. Faith steps out on what, on what, they, what it believes God has ordained. There's a step to your faith. There is something that we need to not just... We teach a lot about faith, all these kind of things. Let's, t- let's talk about walking the walk. Let's talk about believing God and asking Him for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. A spirit of wisdom. Uh, a little homework because of just time constraints. But in, in James chapter 4, it talks about how there's wisdom that's earthly and there's wisdom that's from above. But wisdom that's earthly, it just has its roots in two things. Uh, it's really one thing, self. It says when you, are, you have bitter jealousy or selfish ambition. And you know what social media is filled, filled with today? Something that makes you jealous or something where you go, I want that too. Bitter jealousy or selfish ambition. And so what happens is there's a wisdom or a breath that says, do this to get that. Can I tell you that there, the spirit of wisdom also says, do this? Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. That tells me when I hear the word, there is application. Every time you and I come together and we sit here and we hear the word of God, there is something that the spirit of wisdom tells me, do this and this will come about. Not as a manipulative factor, but as wisdom. By wisdom, a house is built by understanding is established. Your and my life, our marriages, our families, our businesses are to come in line with the kingdom of heaven. We are in covenant with him. He said, I'll bless you. You, you'll, you, you won't, you'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. You'll not lack. This is the blessing of the Lord, Deuteronomy 28. The blessing. This is a covenant. But he says, if you see the beginning, if you do, if you listen. No, sometimes works gets this bad rap. But can I tell you the grace that's given to you is to do the works? The grace that was given to Abraham, God came and he showed up and he said, oh, spoke to him again. And he said, now do this. And he gave him a word to speak over his life. He gave him a word to speak over Sarah. And he said, now I'm going to show you where we're going to cut covenant and you're going to be reminded this is how it's going to work. There's works for you and me. And so this is the prayer that God, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give into you the breath of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, pneuma, the breath, the voice. It speaks the spirit of wisdom, and of revelation of the knowledge of him. I think this is so cool about Jesus. Jesus was wisdom, or God made manifest to us wisdom. Jesus is made wisdom. There's this cliche thing that has maybe became cliche. It didn't start out that way, but it was the statement, w, or this WWJD, what would Jesus do? Did you know that you can look at what Jesus, Jesus' life, and he operated in wisdom? He only did what his father said. He operated in wisdom. Well, he, he, he didn't speak. He drove in the sand. Sometimes we're famous for speaking before we should, or we get upset. And he, he, We can look at Jesus' life, and we can see wisdom. Sometimes just looking at Jesus is like the pictures on the box when you're trying to put something together. You just... You can look at the directions, and you can see figure 1B in this bolt and this kind of stuff, but you can't figure it out. Is that backwards? Is that this side or this side? But if you'll just go back to the box, and you'll see the image, the express image of our Father. You'll see the image of that, that deer stand, and you're like, oh, no, no, that goes on this side. Okay, that needs to be flipped this way, because you could see the image. Sometimes wisdom isn't so much in words as much as it is for us just to look at the image of Christ. And what did he do? What did he look like? How did he love somebody? How did he feed somebody? How did he get down in the, how did he meet somebody at the well? How did he pause and stop everything else so he could be about this? This is wisdom. So he's saying, I pray that he would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That you'd be able to see Christ. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know the hope. 
to which he's called you? What are the riches of the glorious inheritance of the saint? And what is the, what is the immeasurable, excuse me, immeasurable greatness of his power? Again, your calculations must include his greatness of power that's in and toward and for you. He says, toward us who believe according to the work of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. Again, all authority, power and dominion. All of this is words. Power, authority, dominion. All of that is the expressed, only expressed through words. The, 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 there would be a word that would say, This above what God says. No, God's word and authority is raised above that word. He says, um, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the the one that's to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body. So we are the church, one body, one spirit, one faith, Ephesians, we read this this morning. There's one body. There's one head. Verse 23. Which is his body, the church. The fullness of him who fills all in all. I want to just close this morning by talking about the fullness of him who fills all in all. And I just want to talk about that word fullness. It's the fullness of him who fills all in all. His body his, we are truly, you've heard it said this way, the hands and feet of Jesus on this earth. It, when God's not moving, it's because we are preoccupied about plan C or D or E. God wants you and me moving. And this word, the, to be filled with the fullness, is this picture. It, when, I, when I look up this word, to be filled with the fullness, he fills all in all with his church, with his body. It's the head and the body connected. It's all one. It's this moving part, and it's what you're called to do. You're called to work with the head to bring about him here on this earth. What does that look like? But this word, of, of he's the one that fills the fullness, is this picture of a rower. A rower in a boat. Have you ever seen like a Viking ship? The ship is not complete. It's not a whole ship. It has a bench on the bottom. You see all these benches. And on the bench, are, it's just like here, there's this bench. But it, it, the benches, are, 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 that ship's useless. Even though there's oars, it's useless without the rowers. And this picture of fullness is that the ship is not just built. It doesn't just have its oars, but it has its crew. It has a crew, and it has a crew that is in unison and partnered with fullness. It's complete. It's, it's under the authority of one head that whoever is directing that ship, or if you've ever seen it happen, they go, there's somebody at the front. All these guys are on these pews, and they got the oars, and somebody is at the front of them saying, ho, oh, oh, ho, or whatever word they want to use, but there's some rhythm, or there's some beat, or let me say it this way. There's a word. There's a one there's a one. There's a, there's a togetherness. And so I guess I was just thinking about that. And uh, as I was, uh, I was thinking, how's it rowing? That's just what the Lord just, how's it rowing? That's what God came to Abraham and said, hey, how's it rowing? What have you been up to? Are, are, you, in, are you in unison with me? Or are you, are, you on the, are you a part of the boat that I've called? Are you bringing about my plan that you were called and created to? Because there's a seat right there with your name on it. There's a seat right there. Are, how's, how's, how's the rowing going? What, what, what's, what's life? Uh, what are you, are you considering? Are you considering, are you considering me in, in, in what you're doing right now? Are you considering, it, did I author this even? I mean, this is an important thing. Because there is no plan B. There's no plan B. And uh, the call of God is on your life. The call of God is on my life. What am I doing with the call? Are his hands active? 
are they as active as they could be and should be? Or do I got one hand on the row and one hand on the... What, how am I doing? These are, these are good questions. And um, I believe the Lord wants to show us hope and pictures. And if we will just come back in line in a sense and just say, Lord, what do you say? What do you say about this? And begin to ask him, Lord, what do you say about my life? I, and as I was going to ask that very question to you this morning, I had almost heard somebody say, you want me to ask the Lord about what I'm supposed to do, but I don't even know how to hear his voice. I can't. And what I heard was, you can't do a pull-up either. That's what people say. I can't do a pull-up. Or I can do a pull-up, but I can't do five. I can't do ten. But can I tell you, if you would go to the gym for a few weeks and you'd continue there, it wouldn't be long. And guess what you would do? Pull up. So many times we say we can't and so we don't. And we stop trying. And this is what prayer is. It's getting quiet to talk with the Lord. And you'll find if you would do that, just a few days, just for a little while, you'll find that he speaks to you very clearly. It's a promise that my children know my voice. And as strangers, they will not follow. This is the way that God wants to lead you. It's the way that he leads you to plan A. But when we say, I can't and I don't, we begin to pick up something else. And we go a different way. And we go it our own way. Because a prayerless life is a prideful life. It's a separate life. It's a life that's filled with care. According to Philippians, he says this. He says, but cast all your care and all your anxiety on him. With with thanksgiving, let your requests and your desires be made known to God. And he says, I'll guard your heart. I'll... there's a conversation with, that we need to be having with the Lord. And if we'll continue that conversation, it won't be long until you're very, very, very aware of Him. This is the same thing that the, that the Lord started this year with on Sunday morning with Brother Marty on, and Sunday night, talking about keeping fellowship with the Lord. What does it mean to keep fellowship? It means to be in unison. It means to walk with. But can I tell you, you're not just going to walk with the Lord as I was thinking about that and the words of the Lord to, to this house from Brother Marty, Amos 3.3. 3. It's impossible to walk together unless you're agreed. It's impossible that two walk together unless they be agreed. And that's how I came to Abraham. Because I was looking up just different places. Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. Abraham walked before God. And the Lord spoke that to my heart so clearly. He didn't just walk with me. He walked before me. And you will walk before me too. And you will walk before him too. Tell my people they will walk. Remind my people. Come to them again. The same way I came to Abraham again 13 years later. And tell them and remind them you will walk before me again. You'll walk before me naked. You'll walk before me in a sense giving an account completely. And it's important that we know that. That this life that so easily can be filled with X, Y, Z when there's not even a plan B. There is this life for the glory of God and He wants to add to you and promises richly and joy. But first things first, let us have a house that's in order. If we're going to start with one, we have to realize he's the author. And there's no plan B. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. I just um, felt like uh, today there was a time, a prayer of just commitment to say, Lord, I want to, I want what you want for my life. That This morning um, was heavy. It was heavy. It was heavy. Uh, I didn't anticipate even the, the recap being, to me, it felt way, way more like weighty, like, hey, do some checkup. Like, I, I thought I was just going to be like trying to, 
talk about the excitement and it's like it just was a little more like this is important this is important but the same way that Abraham had to make an adjustment and say something um, if that's you this morning where you were saying that I, I know that I, I, I don't want plan B I just want plan A we're just going to close our uh, eyes this morning we're just going to get quiet before the Lord but I want you to move on that. If that's you this morning, you say, I want plan A. I don't want plan B. Lord, show me where I've been working on plan B. I want to be in line with you just fully. I want to work on your plan. And I'm asking you for a spirit of wisdom. That's your heart's cry, Lord. I want. You're saying, I want. Then I want you to lift your hand. If you're just saying, I want. I want your plan. I want my life to bring you glory. Glory. Get glory through my life. Just keep your hand up. If you got, thank you. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. You're saying that. I want you to, I'm going to lead you in this prayer of consecration. I'm going to uh, help you uh, use the rudder of your mouth today. Just say this with me. Say, Father, I don't want any other plan but yours for my family. For my finances, for my life, I want your plan. You called me. You're calling, and I'm listening. I hear your voice clearly. Fill me today with the hope to which you've called me. Remind me, make me clearly aware of your power to bring about what you're showing me. Speak to me. Give me the words. Paint the pictures that I need to see, that I need to hear for my life to walk before you and bring you glory. Lord, thank you for visiting me. For checking in on me. And entrusting me with these next few years. I say, my house and my heart and my life is coming into order, full alignment, under authority, your authority. Fill my heart and my days fully with your plan. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. There's some rowing. There's about to be some rowing. There's about to be some moving. There's about to be some going like you hadn't seen before. Some stewardship, some advancement, some fulfillment, some accomplishing, some whole families swept in, some breakthroughs. So Noah happened to come up with plan B because the one of the greatest failures that we could ever consider is that God won't keep his word. It's one of the greatest things, one of the greatest failures ever in our lives as a believer is that we would consider that God wouldn't keep his word. He'll keep his word. He's watching over it to perform it. Amen. God bless you. Hey, if you need healing in your bodies or anything like that, the Bible says, oh, we didn't even do offering today. Praise the Lord. See, you know. Huh? What? I'm sorry. I'm not. You want to do the announcements quick or what? I'm sorry, guys. I I'm, that's, probably don't put me up here for that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But just a few announcements, and then we can give on the way out. <laughs> Sorry. How am I, Mom? Okay, um, I'm actually not going to go through announcements, but here's what you're going to do. Everyone grab your phones, go to your Beyond Church app, and guess what you can do? Click on events down at the bottom 
it'll pull up upcoming events as a little screen. Click that, and then you can scroll and see everything that's going on here. You don't even have to ask anyone. It's just right at your fingertips, okay? Wow. So we do have a Flourish event coming up. We have a Frontline event coming up. We have young adult stuff. We have an outreach night on Valentine's night, which we're so excited about that. So sign up for all that stuff, okay? And, and as far as offering, I don't Yeah, know. and as far as cornhole or not, just the different events, you have to sign up right now. Um, today say the last day or is Wednesday the last day? Uh, Anyway, so make sure you jump on there and do what you need to do there. But anyway, as far as giving, we're going to give to the Lord to worship Him. We're going to give on the way out. But let's put up that offering declaration. We're going to say some things again, just like Abraham, just like Sarah. And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to pray over this, our tithes and offerings and declare uh, over this body that we will not be limited in any way to serve a generation. Father, today we pause and reflect to say thank you. We recognize you as the source of every good gift in our lives. And right now we come into agreement with you and say in this house and in my house there is provision for your vision. In no way will we be limited to serve our generation. We purpose to be an extension of your goodness so others would experience you. Right now, we ask you for wisdom and to direct our steps into a place of overflow. Our lives will bring increase to your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Father, we commit these tithes and offerings to your work, to your service. We thank you for everything that you want done. We thank you that we are not limited. And we take what you bring and you, what is given and we lift it up before you and we give thanks today. We thank you for great impact and many people, many people meeting you. In Jesus' name. Amen.